السلام علیکم پروگرام سوشل ریویو میں خوش آمدید میں ہوں آپ کا میزبان فہیم میاں ناظرین نیو یارک شہر کو آج کل ایک ساتھ کئی چیلنجز کا سامنا ہے جن میں تارکین وطن کی غیر معمولی آمد سب سے بڑا مسئلہ ہے نیو یارک سٹی کے میئر ایرک ایڈم آج ہمارے ساتھ ویڈیو لنک پر موجود ہیں یہ مسلمانوں سمیت تمام ہی کمیونٹیز کی تقریبات میں شریک ہوتے ہیں اور اسی لیے سب جگہ مقبول ہیں لیکن ان دنوں انہیں گزشتہ انتخابی مہم میں مبینہ طور پر ترکی سے فنڈ لینے کے معاملے میں ایف بی آئی کی طرف سے انکوائری کا سامنا ہے ہم کوشش کریں گے کہ ان سے اہم معاملات سمیت تارکین وطن کی آمد کی وجہ سے پیدا ہونے والے مسائل اور مذہبی آزادی کے تناسر میں مسلمانوں کے لیے مزید کیا کیا سہولتیں دی جا سکتی ہیں اس پر بات کریں لیکن ایک بریک کے بعد Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for giving your time to Vosa TV. Firstly, I would like to ask you that New York facing migrant influx, and as you told in the previous conference that more than 2,000 immigrants are coming to New York every week, and the city might facing financial deficit of $12 billion in the next two years. I want to know what your management planning to overcome on this major issue. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, that is exactly uh, what uh, we have been doing, and that is managing a, a national crisis uh, that has fallen on the backs of uh, New York City taxpayers. It's unfair to the taxpayers and it's unfair to the migrants and asylum seekers uh, when you look at the numbers. And you just mentioned we have seen numbers from 2,000 to up to 4,000 coming in a week, totally We have had over 145,000 asylum seekers have come into uh, our city. We have opened more than 210 emergency shelters in response to this crisis, including 18 large-scale, what we call humanitarian uh, shelters. This has been a real financial strain on our city. $2 billion on this crisis we're spending uh, this uh, fiscal year so far. A total of $5 billion would be for the whole year and $12 billion over three fiscal years. And so the call is a simple one. The national government must pick up the cost of this. They must have a decompression strategy that would allow this crisis to be spread throughout the entire country and not New York, just New York City and other small cities. And we have to uh, manage the numbers we have here. One note that people don't realize, over 50% of the people who have come to our city we have been able to manage to allow them to self-sustain themselves and get the services and resources that they need. Over, six, over 50% are no longer in our care and we need help to allow people to work and to become self-sufficient. Mr. Mayor, you're already facing an FBI inquiry in the case to taking the funds from the Turkey. And recently you were also accused in the sexual assault. Uh, all through you and your spokesperson has denied this claim. My question is why you are facing so many troubles? Well, I think that anytime you're a mayor, you know, previous mayors have gone through uh, inquiries as well as I. That is, you know, the role of a mayor of a city this large. From time to time, inquiries will happen and you just have to be as transparent, which I am, as possible. Uh, we want to get to the bottom of any allegations that are made. Uh, I clearly state that I follow the rules. That is my number one quote that I say all the time. We follow the rules here. And we want the same thing that the Southern District and the FBI want. Uh, we want real transparency and to come to a conclusion of exactly uh, what the allegations are. And you will find that I am a mayor and a public servant that will continue to fo follow, follow the rules. That is what I do. And we're, we're going to continue to be as cooperative as possible. Since Hamas and Israel conflict, we have seen thousands of the protesters in the New York City. Either is being conducted by the Muslim or the Jewish community. The both communities are your voter and your supporter. So how is challengeable for you to control the city situation and to maintain the law and uh, maintain the line orders? And it's so important we do just that. Uh, we must create an environment where people are allowed to peacefully 
a voice there, a right to protest without being violent and without being discourteous and disrespectful to each other. We saw an incident where women threw coffee at Palestinian demonstrators. That is unacceptable. Uh, we saw what happened in Vermont when three uh, young men were shot. Uh, that is not the type of display of support for any issue that should take place in the city and in this country. There's no room for hate here in this country or this city, and I'm going to continue to lead from the front. When I speak, when I sit down and speak to my Muslim leaders, they say that how many of their family members are afraid, particularly the women, to wear hijab without being uh, uh, really confronted in a very disrespectful manner. And I hear the same thing from my Jewish constituents. Many of them are afraid uh, to wear a yarmulke in the subway system because of the fear of being assaulted or attacked. We're seeing increases in both anti-Semitism and in Islamophobia. I believe that we need to do three things. Number one, we need to engage our youth and our young people so that they can be part of the solutions that, in front of, that are in front of us. And number two, we need to have a real comp pushback on social media. Social media is spreading using algorithm and other methodologies to spread a lot of the anger that people are seeing and mistruths that are out there. And we need to make sure that we peacefully protest. We've had over 400 protests in the city on both sides of this issue. And we have been able to allow people to protest peacefully without damage to property and without serious injuries uh, to individuals who are participating in their pro protests of support or anti of any given issue. You are the first mayor in the history of the New York City who allow Muslim community to use the loud speaker for the Azan. And the entire community is praising this wonderful decision. I want to know, do you have more any other plans to facilitate the Muslim community? Uh, the rich history I have with the Muslim community, I keep saying over and over again, I'm not a new friend, I'm an old friend. I was there in 2001 when young Muslims men were round up on Coney Allen Avenue. And I stood at the federal penitentiary there on 30th Street calling for them to be uh, released. I supported uh, all of my mosques during those terrible days. I was there on the Senate floor when I was a state senator <clears throat> fighting against Senator Greg Ball, who was Islamic phobic. I was also there when a woman was attacked for wearing a hijab, riding a bus over uh, into Staten Island. I rode with supporters and others to show my solidarity for the Muslim community. And also when a flyer was put out of Kill a Muslim Day, I walked the streets with my Muslim brothers and sisters. And I joined uh, the Yemenese community when the asylum, when, when there was a ban by Donald Trump who had a Muslim ban, I opened up City Hall and we demonstrated together to show our support for solidarity. And so when you look at the Adan's call to prayers, uh, that is just one of the many things I have done. Everything from halal food in our schools to open spaces in our governmental buildings to allow uh, prayers to take place. I understand what it is to live in a multicultural environment like New York and allow all faiths to be able to celebrate their faith because we are a city of faith. And I am a strong believer in faith. I'm a believer in God. And I believe every group should have the right to support, to support and acknowledge their faith in a peaceful way. Mr. Mayor, in the end of this interview, would you like to give any message to our viewers? Yes, uh, I, I want to uh, conclude, um, as I mentioned uh, in my comments, I'm an old friend of this community, an old friend of all the communities of faith. Uh, the men and women of the Sikh community, they would tell you how long I've been around them. The men and women of the Christian community, of the Buddhist community. I traveled with Buddhist monks uh, to pray throughout several parts of the globe. Uh, the Jewish community, I've stood in synagogues and other places of worship. I walked through your mosque and understand what it is to celebrate Ramadan and have days of celebration down in Gracie Mansion. And so we must navigate this together. I think it's imperative that our children should know each other, that we should break bread together, and that we should make sure that we continue to lift up our city and send the right message. There's no place for hate 
in this amazing city that we live in. And I thank you so much for allowing me to come on with you. Thank you, Mr. Mir. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank Have a you. Good day.